talking about our goal of the week, which is the power of our choices. And you've been doing such a great job understanding the different choices and then the consequences that can follow based on if it's a smart choice or not smart choice. No matter what, there is a consequence that comes after it. You just have to think before you act about what do I want that consequence to be. Okay, so now we are going to uh, complete another choice to consequence matching activity. So have fun. Hey, boys and girls, we have another day of matching choices to consequences. So here it says getting distracted while the teacher is talking. Not a smart choice, which will lead to a negative consequence, which could be you won't learn as much. Returning money that you find on the floor, that's a smart choice. So you will have a positive consequence. People will think you are trustworthy and the person will be very grateful. Also, it will make your heart feel very good that you made a very good decision. Down here it says lying about something bad you did. Not a smart choice to lie. Always, always, always be honest and own up to it. A negative consequence would be people won't trust you as much anymore. It's hard to gain back someone's trust once, the, once you lie. So always be honest. Remember that. Up here it says getting revenge when someone is mean to you. Not a smart choice. Two wrongs don't make a right. So don't be mean to someone just because they were to you. Choose kind. So a negative consequence will come out of this if you want to get revenge. The conflict will get bigger and everyone will feel worse. A better choice could have been to talk it out with that person and then you will both feel better and the conflict will be resolved. Here it says thinking before you speak to make sure your words are kind. So that's called being mindful and not being impulsive with your choices. You are thinking before you're speaking. So that would be a positive consequence. People will think you're nice and want to be your friend. Down here it says stealing a hat from someone's backpack. Not a good choice to steal. So a negative consequence would be someone is really sad because their hat is gone. Also, when they find out that it's you, no one will be able to trust you. So be thinking about that. Let's do three more. So reading at home every night. That is a very smart choice and I sure hope you boys and girls are making sure that you're being responsible with that at home as well. A positive consequence that will come out of that is you will become a better reader. Now if you don't read at home every night, that will be a negative consequence that will come out of that. You will lose what you've lost and you will not grow as a reader. So you're only hurting yourself if you're not reading at home every night. Here it says spending your time wisely in class. Smart choice when you're doing independent work, what will be a positive consequence? You will finish all of your work and your teacher will think you're responsible. Absolutely. Down here is a choice in PE, passing the ball to others and using encouraging words to others when you're playing soccer in PE. So it sounds like you're being a team player, you're being encouraging. So that's a positive consequence. People will think you're a great teammate. Again, reflect on your own choices and your own and the, and the consequences that come out of that in your own life. Let's continue on the third day with our What Should Danny Do? We are helping him to make smart choices, but we can also read both scenarios to help us understand what the consequence would be for a not smart choice and have a negative consequence, or what the consequence would be if it was a smart choice that was made and he would have a positive consequence. So here's another part of Danny's day at school. In class, Miss Blakely is teaching us how to use a number line in math. I don't like standing in line to go to recess, so I don't understand why numbers need to stand in line either. Oh, this is so confusing. Does anyone have any questions? She asks. I look around and it seems like everyone else understands. If I raise my hand, my friends might laugh at me. I'm not a clown. I'm a superhero. Now, is that true? If you have a question, should your friends laugh at you for asking it? Absolutely not. So never be afraid to ask for help if you need it. But what should Danny do? Should he raise his hand to ask the question? Or should he not raise his hand? Let's say he chooses not to raise his hand. So we're going to go to page 46 and find out what would be the consequence of that action. I don't raise my hand and neither does anyone else. Okay, she says, please turn in your worksheets when you are done. Uh-oh, this is confusing. I don't know where to start. Which numbers do I put on the line and how? I try to use my super focus, but it isn't happening. How many times has this happened to us before? Maybe somebody gives you a direction and you're still not sure, then you need to ask for help. Just then an idea pops into my head. 
I use my x-ray vision to look at Mario's paper. Now he's cheating. Please keep your eyes on your own paper, Miss Blakely announces. Aw, oh, man, how'd she know? After a few minutes, the class starts turning in their worksheets. Miss Blakely looks at my sheet and asks me why it's blank. I used invisible ink, I say. Uh-oh. Miss Blakely doesn't laugh at my joke. Danny, if you don't know how to do something, you should always ask, she says. I'm going to now write your parents a note and send some worksheets home with you so that you don't fall farther behind. I turn on my super focus and Mommy shows me how to use a number line. Now I have to do the worksheets. If I would have just asked Miss Blakely the question in class, it would have saved me a lot of time. So I think he learned from that mistake for sure. Now let's say that Danny does choose to raise his hand and ask a question instead of ignoring it and saying that he used invisible ink. That's not going to fly. I know I can figure this out with a little help. I turn on my super focus and I raise my hand. How am I supposed to use the number line to get the answer? I ask. Well, that's a great answer. That's a great question, Danny, Miss Blakely says. She explains it again and I finally get it. Score! I finish my worksheet and double check it. Mario whispers to me. Thanks for asking that question, Danny. I wasn't sure what I was doing. So sometimes when you ask a question, other kids are wondering the same thing. So it's really helping out all of you. When I get a, when I get home, Mommy asks me how my day was. I tell her everything that happened. Sounds like your day was okay, she says. Do you think that was because of how you used your power to choose? I think so, I say. And if I use it even more wisely tomorrow, I might even have a better day. So always, always, always don't be afraid to ask questions. Advocate for yourself for sure. Okay, boys and girls, I hope you have a very happy Wednesday. I will see you tomorrow. Keep working hard.